Hello students, today in this video I am going to cover your lesson Madam Rides the Bus written by Valigannan. Madam Rides the Bus is the story of an 8 year old girl Vali. She was a wonderful girl. She was mature, clever, practical and self-respecting beyond her age. She planned her bus journey during the nap hours of her mother. Interestingly, her mother could never know of the bus journey her daughter undertook during her nap in the afternoon. Let's start. There was a girl named Valiammai who was called Vali for short. She was 8 years old and very curious about things. Her favorite pastime was standing in the front doorway of her house, watching what was happening in the street outside. There were no playmates of her own age on her street, and this was about all she had to do. But for Vali, standing at the front door was every bit as enjoyable as any of the elaborate games other children played. Watching the street gave her many new unusual experiences. The most fascinating thing of all was the bus that traveled between her village and Meniers Down. It passed through her street each hour, once going to the town and once coming back. The sight off the bus, filled each time with a new set of passengers, was a source of unending joy for Vali. Day after day she watched the bus, and gradually a tiny wish crept into her head and grew there. She wanted to ride on that bus, even if just once. This wish became stronger and stronger, until it was an overwhelming desire. Valley would stare wistfully at the people who got in or off the bus when it stopped at the street corner. Their faces would kindle in her longings, dreams, and hopes. If one of her friends happened to ride the bus and tried to describe the sights of the town to her, Valley would be too jealous to listen and would shout, in English, Proud, 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 proud. Neither she nor her friends really understood the meaning of the word, but they used it often as a slang expression of disapproval. Over many days and months Valley listened carefully to conversations between her neighbors and people who regularly used the bus. And she also asked a few discreet questions here and there. This way she picked up various small details about the bus journey. The town was six miles from her village. The fare was 30 pays one way. Which is almost nothing at all. But to Valley, who scarcely saw that much money from one month to the next, it seemed a fortune. The trip to the town took 45 minutes. On reaching town, if she stayed in her seat and paid another 30 pays, she could return home on the same bus. This meant that she could take the 1 o'clock afternoon bus. Reach the town at 1.45, and be back home by about 2.45. On and on went her thoughts as she calculated and recalculated, planned and replanned. Well, one fine spring day. The afternoon bus was just on the point of leaving the village and turning into the main highway when a small voice was heard shouting, Stop the bus! Stop the bus! The bus slowed down to a crawl, and the conductor, Sticking his head out the door, said, Hurry then. Tell whoever it is to come quickly. It's me, I'm the one who has to get on. Oh, really? You don't say so? Yes, I simply have to go to town. And here's my money. Okay, okay, but first you must get on the bus. Never mind, I can get on by myself. You don't have to help me. Oh, Please don't be angry with me, my fine madam. Here, have a seat right up there in front. Everybody move aside please, make way for madam. It was the slack time of day, and there were only six or seven passengers on the bus. They were all looking at Valley and laughing with the conductor. Valley was overcome with shyness. Avoiding everyone's eyes, she walked quickly to an empty seat and sat down. May we start now, madam? The bus was now going along the bank of a canal. The road was very narrow. On one side there was the canal and, beyond it, palm trees, grassland, distant mountains, and the blue, blue sky. 
On the other side was a deep ditch and then acres and acres of green fields, green, 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 as far as the eye could see. Oh, it was all so wonderful. Suddenly she was startled by a voice. Listen, child, you shouldn't stand like that. Sit down. There's no body here, Booza child. I've paid my 30 pesos like everyone else. Oh, sir, but this is Avery grown up, madam. Do you think a mere girl could pay her own fare and travel to the city all alone? I am not a madam. Please remember that. And you've not yet given me my ticket. I'll remember. Just sit back and make yourself comfortable. Why should you stand when you've paid for a seat? Because I want to. But if you stand on the seat, you may fall and hurt yourself when the bus makes a sharp turn or hits a bump. That's why we want you to sit down, child. I'm not a child, I tell you. I'm eight years old. Of course, of course. How stupid of me. Eight years, my. Are you all alone, dear? Yes, I'm traveling alone. And I've got a ticket too. Yes, she's on her way to town with a 30 pays ticket. Oh, why don't you mind your own business? Is it proper for such a young person to travel alone? Do you know exactly where you're going in town? What's the street? What's the house number? You needn't bother about me. I can take care of myself. Her first journey, what careful, painstaking, elaborate plans she had had to make for it. She had thriftily saved whatever stray coins came her way, resisting every temptation to buy peppermints, toys, balloons, and the like, and finally she had saved a total of 60 pays. How difficult it had been, particularly that day at the village fair, but she had resolutely stifled a strong desire to ride the merry-go-round, even though she had the money. After she had enough money saved, her next problem was how to slip out of the house without her mother's knowledge. But she managed this without too much difficulty. Every day after lunch her mother would nap from about 1 to 4 or so. Valley always used these hours for her excursions as she stood looking from the doorway of her house. Or sometimes even ventured out into the village. Today, these same hours could be used for her first excursion outside the village. Suddenly Valley clapped her hands with glee. A cow, tail high in the air, was running very fast, right in the middle of the road, right in front of the bus. The bus slowed to a crawl, and the driver sounded his horn loudly again and again. But the more he honked, the more frightened the animal became and the faster it galloped, always right in front of the bus. A young cow, tail high in the air, was running very fast, right in the middle of the road, right in front of the bus. The bus slowed to a crawl, and the driver sounded his horn loudly again and again. But the more he honked, the more frightened the animal became and the faster it galloped, always right in front of the bus. Somehow this was very funny to Valley. She laughed and laughed until there were tears in her eyes. At last the cow moved off the road. And soon the bus came to a railroad crossing. A speck of a train could be seen in the distance, growing bigger and bigger as it drew near. Then it rushed past the crossing gate with a tremendous roar and rattle, shaking the bus. Then the bus went on and passed the train station. From there it reversed a busy, well laid out shopping street and, turning, entered a wider thoroughfare. Such big, bright looking shops. What glittering displays of clothes and other merchandise. Such big crowds. Struck dumb with wonder, Valley gaped at everything. Then the bus stopped and everyone got off except Valley. Hey, lady, aren't you ready to get off? This is as far as your 30 pays takes you. No, I'm going back on the same bus. Why, is something the matter? No, nothing's the matter. I just felt like having a bus ride, that's all. Don't you want to have a look at the sights, now that you're here? All by myself. Oh, I'd be much too afraid. But you weren't afraid to come in the bus. 
Nothing to be afraid of about that. Well, then, why not go to that stall over there and have something to drink? Nothing to be afraid of about that either. Oh, no, I couldn't do that. Well, then, let me bring you a cold drink. No, I don't have enough money. Just give me my ticket, that's all. It'll be my treat and not cost you anything. No, no, please, no. Won't your mother be looking for you? No, no one will be looking for me. The bus started, and again there were the same wonderful sights. Valley wasn't bored in the slightest and greeted everything with the same excitement she'd felt the first time. But suddenly she saw a young cow lying dead by the roadside, just where it had been struck by some fast-moving vehicle. Isn't that the same cow that ran in front of the bus on our trip to town? What had been a lovable, beautiful creature just a little while ago had now suddenly lost its charm in its life and looked so horrible, so frightening as it lay there, legs spread eagled, a fixed stare in its lifeless eyes, blood all over. The bus moved on. The memory of the dead cow haunted her, dampening her enthusiasm. She no longer wanted to look out the window. She sat thus, glued to her seat, until the bus reached her village at 3.40. She stood up and stretched herself. Then she turned to the conductor and said, Well, sir, I hope to see you again. Okay, madam, whenever you feel like a bus ride, come and join us. And don't forget to bring your fare. Bye. When she entered her house she found her mother awake and talking to one of Valley's aunts, the one from South Street. This aunt was a real chatterbox, never closing her mouth once she started talking. And where have you been? Yes, you write, so many things in our midst and in the world outside. How can we possibly know about everything? And even when we do know about something, we often can't understand it completely, can we? Oh, yes. What? What's that you say? Oh, I was just agreeing with what you said about things happening without our knowledge. Just a chit of a girl, she is, and yet look how she pokes her nose into our conversation, just as though she were a grown lady. Valley smiled to herself. She didn't want them to understand her smile. But, then, there wasn't much chance of that, was there. I hope the story was clear and video was helpful for you. If you enjoyed the video then like my video and subscribe my channel for more videos.